Hi, and welcome to the trip. I'm Megan Slattery, and this is my co-host. Tracy Evans. And Pete Traverso. Guest. Welcome, Pete. Yeah. Welcome. Happy to have you here. All right, first question. My fiance has three kids, ages 12, 14, and 16. I have been with him for four years. They run hot and cold with me. I'm concerned about getting married. Should I be? Mm. So, Pete, I'm going to, because you're our guest, we're going to let you go first. You have an opinion? <laughs> Stepkids. Yes. They're not yours. Mm -hmm. She has a 16, a 14, and a 12. 12, 14, 16, yep. Right in a row. They have meetings at night to make your life miserable. <laughs> meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, I've been in this situation, gave the kid everything, asked him to bring the garbage in for his mother one night. He looked at me and said, you're not my father. I feel like that happens a lot. I've heard that. That's what happens. And you can't blame the kid. Mm. It's not his fault. Mm, no. No, at all. No. So, how long were you in that? Uh, how long were you his step? Well, yeah. I wasn't married to her. Oh, you weren't married. You okay. were dating. I okay. was dating. Okay. But I dated her for a couple of years. Yeah. So, you, similar situation. Similar situation. Now, here you have three. Yes. At all the They're three bad back. ages. Yes. <laughs> Look at the ages. Yeah, yeah. Th this is where I'm going to go with that, the ages. So she spent it with four years, so we already figured out their ages would have been 8, 10, and 12, right? Exactly. So I think, one, everything that's happening now, the hot and cold thing is probably not to be taken personally, exclusively, because of the ages. If she's been in it this long, I'm assuming, and I have to make some assumptions, that it hadn't been this bad until now. So I wouldn't take it personally, but I would be, I would, I, I, I agree with her being cautious at this point in getting married. I would want to wait till they were a little bit older and see how it plays out. But right now, this is a, she's going to be sitting at the table looking at her, looking in her soup. Like, what the heck am I doing here? You know? And especially if the kids get along with the mother. Yeah. Who's out of the picture now. The mm -hmm. father's with a new wife. Mm -hmm. And it's not their mother. Right. Yeah. Right. So, Peter, are you saying that they shouldn't? Tracy, what do you think? I mean, should she not get married? I, 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 I'm I not going to go there with that. I, They've been together for years. So I think that with this situation and a lot of other situations, you have to look at the long-term mm -hmm. picture. Yeah. At some point, those kids are going to love you. And they're going to appreciate I agree. you, you know, and they're going to appreciate once they realize, man, I was a spoiled brat. Yeah. I had this person who loved my mom, loved my dad, loved, you know, whatever parent and loved me, you yeah. know, and cared about me. The, at some point they will appreciate it. I think as adults having more experience, being wiser, I think we have to sometimes push those things aside. And it's hard, you know, when you have teenagers or whatever, especially mm -hmm. when you have like grown ass teenagers, teenagers yeah. that are like, they're they're going to be 14, taller than you. 14, but they look like they're like 30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, oh, yeah, you, you have, can't tell them what you know, they can right, and can't like, wear. And it's, it, and, and mm -hmm. it takes time, and I think in the, the end, it's it, it's going to feel better knowing that those kids have grown to appreciate you and respect you and and probably at some point apologize and say, God, I was probably a very terrible yeah. kid. But you have to get through those years first, first. before yeah. they even realize that. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. It takes time. It's okay. a long time coming. That's a long time coming. You have a 12-year-old mm -hmm. and a 14-year-old and a 16-year-old. Yeah. Yes. It's going to be at least 10 years. At least. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At least. Yeah, don't and expect. That, yeah. yeah, it's not. And later on, yes, they will. I, I think this if is a really mature question. Long. I think it's a mature <laughs> question uh, to ask that now. You know, um, so... Should she be concerned? Yes, that's the question. I think she should be concerned. And it's a mature question to not be concerned. I would not take it all personally. However, if when you do, if you do go ahead with this marriage, which I'm, I'm presuming you're going to go ahead with this, but I would delay it a little bit and I would set the ground rules out of the gate. And then your husband, your future husband, has to have your back. And that's where things fail. That's where things fail when the step parent does yep. not get the proper treatment as a parent, and they really yeah. need to. Yeah. If they're getting married, and she's been with him that long, they have to set the ground rules. Yeah, yeah Pete. It's the father's <laughs> kids. Yes, it is. They're not yours. Oh. Sure. 
Woodside, it puts him in a, it, he's in no great position either. No, he's not. You it's, think you're, you're in bad shape. <laughs> Those are really your shape. kids. Oh, Those are really his kids. Yeah. Yeah, Tough. you got to feel for him. Yeah, while well, she's sitting at the table looking at her soup going, what have I done here? He's going to be, you know, with the wolf pack, you know, trying to say, oh, my gosh, just be nice to her. Just be good. Just behave. Yeah. It's, it's complex. Yeah, I mean, so uh, use caution, set boundaries, ground rules, and they're his and final think say about, is Think, to, about, the, think yeah. about the long run. Yeah, you have but to you think have about to have a lot run. of support from the father. I agree. Yeah. 100%. 100%. Otherwise, if that's not there, don't get married. Yeah, you can't do it. You're going to be you're gonna you're crushed. Gonna, they have meetings at night. <laughs> the kids do. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> How do we torment How do we wives? jack with her now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> not to give you any more support or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Pete. There's an old, there's an old movie. There's an old movie uh, be called... Be concerned is the end of this. <laughs> there's an old movie um, called Bebe's Kids. I don't know if you guys remember that one at all. No. Check that one out. Bebe's it's a Bebe's Kids. Kids. It's a long cartoon story about a guy who runs in that same situation, woman, bunch of kids, whatever, but they end up working it out and make it. It took time, though. Okay, Take, yeah, that, this is like the marathon, and the endurance has got to be there. Yeah. All right, thanks for the question. Yeah, sure. Uh, question Number two. two? <clears throat> All right. Should it be a concern if your partner doesn't have a lot of friends, and how can that play out in a relationship? Oh, yes. Mm. Mm-hmm. Pete, you're the guest. We'll give, we'll give you the floor again. <laughs> <laughs> you had a lot to say on this one. <laughs> First of all, she's looking to you for to he or she. In oh, yeah, we don't know. We genderless. don't know. It's genderless. Yeah, it's genderless. <laughs> it's looking for you for all the entertainment. Mm-hmm. Now you become the entertainment committee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Then... After you're done with the entertainment committee, if you want to go see a hockey game, they think they're going. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, for sure they do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I think this is a tough one. Um, I actually had a relationship, which it was like Animal House. It's funny, Animal House came up earlier today. My boyfriend had so many, I'll say quote-unquote friends, because they were more like Klingons, as you mentioned. They just were, he was the golden child, his career was going well, he was an actor, and we had a studio apartment, there was one bedroom, tiny one bedroom in LA, and they were there all the time. His friends were there all the time, and I didn't have as many friends, and it was it was horrible because I did look to him for a lot of my, you know, what are we going to do tonight, where yeah. are we going to eat? But I had like four and five guys at all times in surround sound and war movies. And I'll tell you what, I will never do that again. I will never, ever do that again. It was a mistake to, um, I gave up a lot of my life for him and, or my interest. I gave up a lot of my interest. I was young. I was very young. I was in my 20s. So I don't want to say I would do that, anything like that now. And I have a huge group of uh, friends and social network. But it's going to be a problem for both people. Because one ends up acting like the parent a little bit, don't you think? Yeah. They have to kind of baby the person. And you can't be with someone that that much. I mean, that's true. <laughs> you know, yeah. you need a break. Yes. You know, every once in a while you have to escape, and you get a cling on like that. It's tough. I, you got to, and you have to set those boundaries at the beginning. Very, it's, I know it's tough and you want to be with that person all the time and you get caught up being with each other, but you have to set those boundaries right away and know that even if you do move to LA, Pittsburgh, wherever, and you're in a one bedroom apartment with that person and now you're there and they don't have friends mm -hmm. or you don't have friends and you're with their friends, you as a person have to know you can't set yourself up for failure and you have to find other interests. You have to. You have to. And that mm -hmm. other person also has to set the boundaries and say, all right, I need to spend my own time. Hey, here's the apartment to yourself. I'm going to go to the museum or I'm going to go do yeah. something by myself. So you're setting those boundaries because after the, the initial love lust period is over, you're going to need that space. You're going to need that space. If you don't set it, it's, it's going to be even, even worse. And the longer you let it go on, the worse it gets. Yeah. Yes. The worse it gets. Well, then it becomes a bitch. Yeah. Well, because now you're you're making him him or her handicapped. Yeah, absolutely. 
You're I, the crutch. I also, you know, there's the word space we use that a lot. And, you know, as a single person, I have a ton of space. And I value it so much now that uh, in, in relationships, sometimes it's looked at as a, as a threat. Yeah. You're going somewhere without me as if I don't want to be with you. That's not what it means. It means I want to be with my friends. I want to go to the hockey game. I want to go to the opera. I want to go for a run. Like, yeah. just, space is something that allows people to grow. Sure, it does. <laughs> without yeah. space, without oxygen, yeah. it will die. Yeah. So um, the question was, what, is it a concern? And how can that play out sure. in the future? Oh, how can it play out? It can play out, one person's going to be very needy and the other person's going to be very resentful and a lot of passive-aggressive stuff it happens. But <laughs> You don't have your independence. Yeah, but... If the rules are set in the beginning, mm -hmm. they will also become giving you your space because they'll appreciate their own. Their own. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Yes, if the person just simply is more of an introvert, we also talked about personality types. Not everyone is going to have a pack of friends. It, it's just not necessary. They may right. just have their good friends here and there. So, um, yeah, they, they, as long as they take care of their own needs, you have to take care of your own needs. That go, that's true of everyone. Whether you both have a huge social network, that you have to take care of your own needs. It can play out in a bad way. So in out of the gate, it has to be established. This is how I live my life. This is how it's going to go. And uh, in there's got to be some compromise. There and too. I think with that, uh, the reassurance, you know, what, while you're doing oh, that process. True. So like, let's say you go to do something on your own and they do, just send a quick text and say, hey, I'm happy that I got to do this. Look forward to seeing you later. That's yes. the like reassurance of like, this is, everything's still fine. I'm not leaving you. I'm not, there's no problem. I'm just doing my I own like thing that, right Tracy. now. Yeah. yeah, it's not so black and white. We're all being a little hardcore about like, you know, our space, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's nice to reassure. It's nice to reassure. Yeah. yeah. All right. So it's been great. It's been great. Thank you for coming, Pete. We yeah, had a thanks. riot. We had a riot yeah. before the show. We need to, <laughs> <laughs> we need to record yeah. before the show. Right. All right. <laughs> Our email is relationships at deadlinedetroit.com. My password is working. And uh, so please send us your questions there. You make the show. And we look forward to hearing from you uh, either there, Facebook, or Instagram. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy yeah. New Year to Bye -bye. everyone.